uh, yeah, thankful and uh, really thankful to you know to Dave Benedict and the, and the president uh, and uh, and and UConn and the state and all of our fans. Just grateful and thankful, um, you know, for all the trust they put in me and uh, obviously the opportunity to, to uh, you know to, to be here and be rewarded. You know the way that they've uh, rewarded me and my family just means uh, just means a lot. It's humbling. Um, so, how important was it to you to make sure that the assistants were rewarded as well as you? Yeah, I got a great staff, and I've always my whole career everywhere. You can literally take uh, every place I've ever coached, <laughs> and um, I think uh, every place that I've been. It's like talked about how great a staff I had. Whether I was at Wagner, you know, where I had my brother. And uh, Bashir Mason, you know, who's a very successful Division One head coach, and Luke Murray was with me back then. I mean, I had that level of a staff around me at, at Wagner. So, um, you know, it's just been a huge key to, to the success my programs have had everywhere I've been. I've had um, amazing people, and uh, we've made it really difficult for people to leave, which is uh, which is great. Could you just describe what it's been like the past couple months between first the Lakers pursuit and then yeah. working Oof. through this? Yeah, I mean, you could really just dump it all into, uh, you know, really uh, the last two years, just the championship runs and how that summer flew by so quickly with everything that comes with winning it. And then, uh, and then you know, following that, the amazing season up and then you get into this off season and, um, you know, you, you're, you're dealing with that. you got so many players going to the NBA, uh, and then you're doing so many things again. Um, so it's just been, it's been, it's flown by. It's, uh, it's been a lot, but, uh, you know, it's been fun. Dan, can you just talk about your family legacy and how you're setting up generations of your family, just how proud you must be of yeah. signing such a big deal and really taking care of your family long term? Yeah, I do because... Um, you know, it's uh, you know my, my career has, has been unique. I think uh, for 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 college coaches, just the the trajectory of it. Um, you know, going and you know, being a college coach, and and then you're know, going back to the high school level as a head coach, and then having to literally uh, you know earn your way up through the business. Um, you know, as a high school coach, as a low division one coach, as a mid major coach, and uh, you know, so my family has seen the grind, and uh, you know, my wife and my and my two sons um, been able to model for them, you know, how what it's like to, to work hard through your twenties, thirties, forties, you know, and as you're hitting your fifties, now you're at the top of your profession. Um, Sorry. So. Uh, do you remember when you made your your first? Head coaching job at St. Benedict's, right? St. Benedict's, yeah, yeah, yeah. high school, head high school yeah, coach. Yeah. So that was only 15 years ago. And um, so I'm proud of it. I think it's a great example for people. Uh, you know, it's a great example for my family and my sons. Uh, so I'm proud of it. Yeah, why, why do you think uh, you and your assistants complement each other so well? I'm sure you have, each of you have a lot in common. Yeah. They all bring a unique set of traits. I imagine if you could just elaborate on what each guy brings to the operation. Yeah, um, well, I'm just so careful about who I hire. I, I, and I always have been. So um, you got to. I think we share the same obsession uh, with our work. Yeah, um, you know, particularly with Luke and Kamani. I think we're we're all uh, we all obsess. I work really well with with staff members that obsess over their job the way I do. So that's a great starting point. Um, I would say with Luke and Kamani, they're, they're not. They're not. It's not any areas where where they're weak. Like they can recruit, and uh, you know they they can help develop player skills. And then they're tactically they're real sound coaches. Um, they're great with building relationships with the players and the people around the players to earn the trust. Uh, they understand psychology and motivation. Um, you know they're. they're uh, they work well. Uh, they're good communicators, so they do a really good job, you know, working with other staff members. They're just those two guys are, are, are just super well-rounded. And then, uh, and then Tom is uh, Tom's a vet. I mean, Tom is, you know, Tom's a four-time national champ and with uh, with with head coaching experience. So he just he balances off, 
you know, just Tom's personality really it blends well with 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 the three with with us three other guys because Tom is like that that voice of reason. And, to follow up on that, is it harder to put together a staff or a team? It's always hard for me to put together a staff because um, I think there's not a lot of people that can work for me. Um, just the intensity of, of how we go about our business, uh, the way we run the program. Um, it's a different intensity level. I'm tough on the people that play for me and work for me. I'm demanding. So, yeah, I mean, that's, it's always hard for me to find people to hire. They have to share that kind of same, like, obsession. And, uh, and they can't be looking for life balance. <laughs> With that in mind, Dan, as I know the last couple of summers, different times where you know you thought the team wasn't looking very good. And obviously, it ended up pretty well, but it, yeah. has that happened so far this summer? Where yeah, a long way to go, that kind of stuff. Yeah, the team. I think uh, I initially, whenever I get around the team, I immediately see uh, you know the vulnerabilities that um, you know that that are concerning. But I just think um, you know overall, we 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 we're, we're of a similar talent level. Um, in terms of what, what the group looks like. I think you could see some, some real potential there. Uh, I think, um, you know, can we get... We got two really talented guys, and then Yusef was developing at center. Um, so, you know, can we get out of the center spot close to what we've been getting out of it? And, um, and then it's the guard play, you know, like getting, getting Hassan, getting Aiden, solo ball, like... The, the guards are going to have to play close to the level or at the level that we've had the guards playing at. Um, the big wings have been look, look really look good. Is it fair to say that, um, I know it's only July, whatever, 10th, but, I mean, Alex is going to start. <laughs> but otherwise, could you, yeah. is it fair to say the other four spots are kind of, there's a good competition everywhere? It is, it is. And I don't, um, I think this competition is obviously players that, you know, you expect to be able to win it. Um, you know, like you did when Tristan came in. Uh, you, you know, he had to earn it, but you hoped he would win it, um, and he did. So I think you have some of those in your mind. But I do think that there's going to be a you know, real intense competition to be the fourth starter, fifth starter, first guy off the bench. It's going to be intense. Is it good yeah. to get the Lakers stuff and the contract stuff kind of behind you now and you can just go forward and yeah. really, you know, looking at your team? Yeah, I mean, I haven't thought – I haven't that, – that's – it's not something that like I'm, I obsess over. If anything, uh, I dragged my feet because I just didn't want to look at it or read it or, or deal with it. So, I mean, I, we've been so focused on the basketball part, um, but it's, it's nice that it's over. What yeah, about how the NIL and other program sort of investments? How much did you talk about that while you were talking about the contract, or just over the summer? Yeah, I just you know you, I got such great trust with Dave. I've worked with Dave and Dave. Uh, Dave's as responsible as any of us for where we're at. Just uh, you know, DB's been a great partner. So, you know, we've we're, we've had these conversations with the changing landscape of, of college sports, and you know, the revenue sharing that's coming down the road here, and and uh, you know, TV deals, and and being able to take advantage and maximize our, our brand. Um, our brand is at, is, is at the pinnacle of, of college basketball and college sports in terms of our basketball excellence here on both sides. And how do we take advantage of that uh, to the utmost so that we don't fall behind? Speaking of TV deals, what's your thoughts on the new deal with the Big East as far as more exposure now? Yeah, I think um, the streaming stuff, I, I was always afraid of the streaming. Um, and wanting to stay on uh, on TV, but I've I've kind of changed that uh, mindset when when football went to Amazon last year. So with the with how younger people now are consuming their sports and consuming their what they watch, and uh, it's a lot of it streaming. So um, I thought it was I thought it was better. It was better than what we had. Dan, do you have time to enjoy your success? I mean, this job has changed so much. It's like 65, 24 seven, but do you have time to ever enjoy the finer things? I mean, you throw a first pitch out at Yankee Stadium, yeah. stuff at Fenway, but what are some of the things you do to kind of enjoy your success? Yeah, like moments like that. Um, moments like that at Yankee Stadium, that was cool. Um, so you get some, you get, you get like a, you know, the day there. <laughs> and then you'll get some weekends and stuff, just, but it's mostly around, 
you know, the, like the White House trip or the or the parade in Hartford. But for the most part, you're just your mind is always on some recruit or or the next practice or the opener or getting you guys the non-conference schedule, which I know, <laughs> you know, like all those things, just you're constantly thinking about and um, probably things you when your career is over. Um, I think that's where you, you want to stay so focused and so obsessed on on your work that uh, that you can continue to accomplish more and more and more uh, in your career and with the program here. How much does it help to have someone like David? You know, he's got to do what he says he's got to do. You yeah. can worry about what they brought you. You yeah. do. There's not a lot of drama that's going on here. D- DB has always gotten it done. Um, you know, he provides us with the with the resources and and uh, you know does what he needs to do to. Uh, you know, to, to give us the, the resources to, to compete at the top. Uh, if, if you don't have those resources, you can't do it. So, DB, he always gets it done for us. Do you the find seconds. recruiting changing yeah. now because of because of the yeah. NIL and yeah. all that stuff? I, I think so. I think um, it, it's uh, the NIL, you know, conversations are happening, uh, you know, a little bit earlier with prospects um, and what that looks like at, at, at your school. Um, not with all, but with with, 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 with some. Um, but we're going to stick to the type of players that we've been getting. We're, we're not going to make the mistake of um, getting away from our identity or, or culture um, because we have access to, you know, higher rated players. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're still going to evaluate them the way that we evaluate players, mm-hmm. even though, you know, there may be more players that are interested in UConn because of our success. Yeah, you've been really publicly effusive in your praise of your assistants and promoting them as, as what I believe to be really great head coaches in the future. But they're in such a position now where they don't, a lot of assistants across the country would feel the, the need to take that first head coaching yeah. job opportunity. They obviously don't feel that way. What, what kind of job do you think would have to pull them, would it yeah. have to be to pull them away? And, yeah, I just think for, for you know, and I've had these conversations the last couple of years with Kamani and Luke, it's like, Unless it's going to be one of the best jobs in the Atlantic Ten, um, you know that their that their first job should be, you know, the high end of the Atlantic Ten or 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 a high major job for them. Um, you know that's that's where their mindset should be, and we've made it, um, you know, such a great situation for them here at UConn that uh, they could be patient. You know that way. I mean, they're, they're they should be high major head coaches or at the absolute top of that mid major list of schools that makes the tournament every year and actually has the resources to win a game or two. Does it complicate anything for them the fact that you keep playing into April and a lot of co- a lot of schools <laughs> finish up their uh, recruiting process for their vacancies by then? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if. Uh, if one of those schools want, you know, like schools target people and wait. And I mean, I, I'm surprised. It's surprising to me that more of these ads and search firms don't target them and 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 and, and, and wait. Um, just the level of basketball we've played and their influence in it, and then uh, you know the types of players we have and what it looks like. Uh, yeah, it's surprising, but. They're doing good. Where do you want to get accomplished the second session with your guys? Um, just make sure we probably don't have any more TikTok um, you know, videos drop. Would probably be the first thing I was thinking about today. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then get healthy. We got a couple guys that got to get healthy. Alex is back, um, you know, doing stuff individually. But you know, Liam, Liam took an ankle sprain working out uh, in Texas. So. Uh, you know, he'll miss a couple of weeks with that. So just getting these guys back on the court, getting these summer reps is so is so important. So, you know, we'll push these workouts back as far as we can and try to buy some time for Liam. But just get a you know get a head start. You know, try to you know work harder than what we think other programs are doing, so that we can you know gain a, gain a bigger advantage uh, on people that aren't doing what we're doing this summer. You get paid extra if your kids do more TikToks. <laughs> I mean, they, that may be a problem for them, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> I 
I don't want to sign it. Dave, you was coaching, uh, excuse me, teaching history class at all? I enjoyed it. I, I just, I love being around young people. I, get, I would get energized by going in, in the classroom, even if it was, um, you know, some subject matter that, that I wasn't uh, as familiar with. I, I just love being around young people. So I did. I enjoyed being in the classroom. Um, you know, it's just, it's always fun to me. And, uh, you know, just to develop, like, relationships with kids, too, that weren't on my sports team. That was kind of fun, you know. You were new. Mid to late third, like 36, 37 years old, when you're still a high school teacher and coach, yeah. right? Yeah. Was... So like you, your your entry point to this ascension wasn't like super early, and you just fast tracked. You no. kind of grinded. Yeah. Um, assistant high school coach, uh, you know, assistant college coach, and then you know, head high school, head low one, head mid. I've literally done it all. I've had it. I've had the proper training. I think years ago that's how coaches did train though. I think um, that was a, a normal trajectory back I think. Uh, that's why I think um, I can relate more to like the old school coaches because that was more the way my career arc has gone. If the Luke and Kamani voice to you their desire to become head coaches or are they very content right now because of where this program is? I mean when there are places that have expressed interest in them and they've come in and mentioned those places to me and I've told them what I thought and in a, like in a non-selfish way um, I don't try to hold back my coaches or my players I want these guys you know to keep progressing their career so um, we talk about jobs as they've come out and they've been contacted and you know you've talked in the past about maybe the the cold feet in the early days going from Rhode Island to here some conversations you had with the guy behind you um, <laughs> now that you you know you have you know two in a row the contract now would you look back on that moment and what do you think about maybe what that Dan Hurley didn't know and kind of where you stand now yeah I think um, just the, the championships the contract extensions or whatever that looks like uh, that was just the byproduct of you know being smart enough to always try to get better as a coach every day and to listen to the best possible mentors that you can find like coach uh, let me block, coach Calhoun or my dad or Gino or you know anyone that I take advice from or always try to learn from like so I mean the success is just uh, what, what what I have now st stature wise and financially that's just a byproduct of like every single day trying to run a championship organization and then just every single day just trying to like get better as a coach just like every aspect of it just chasing that pursuing it and now this other stuff is just a byproduct of that I never chased this Dan what was it about Luke and your relationship that made you want to bring him here with you? He, like I said before it's just he's um, just obsessed Luke, Luke's obsessed with, uh, you know, he, he, this consumes his life the way it consumes my life and his family's life and my family's life. Uh, and that's the only way I think to do this job successfully here is uh, it consumes every part of you. And um, he submits to that <laughs> and, um, and embraces it and loves every aspect of what we do. So uh, we just... We have a unique connection, I think, uh, that way and with Kamani as well, where like we love what we do, we're obsessed by it. Um, and that's why we I think fit so good. Yeah, what did Liam show you before the injury? What you know Oof. I've heard other players have been yeah. pretty complimentary of him. So. Yeah. Just mature approach, I think. Um, you know, Liam's offensive game is, is uh, you know, it's it's impressive. It's it's not it's not flawless. Uh, you know, there's um, you know there's areas where he's going to have to improve, but uh, just his readiness for this, the 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 work ethic, you know, the the the, the shooting, the the ability to get to the rim, I think is is better than better than we thought. Um, you know, there's like he's his defensive end and rebounding, some of the toughness, winning play things where we're going to have to get squared away because we can't. Uh, we can't allow any of the freshmen to make us lose because of that type of stuff. But 
he's as ready as any freshman's come in. And what, he was just working out at a gym back home? Or That's a story I got cause, um, from him. He called me on the 4th and uh, at like 4 o'clock. So it's like a player calling you at 4 o'clock on July 4th is not to tell you, hey, Everything's great at home. How are you, coach? You know, it's like the, if a coach calls you or a player, it's usually something bad. So um, he called me and told me he got hurt. Because I told these guys before they left, do not go live at home. Don't play in anything live. So, Who was he doing then? What's that? Who was he doing? He said he was doing a workout. Oh, okay. like, that was like the second thing he said. Like, I wasn't playing live, coach. I, was, I, I got hurt <laughs> in an individual. Did you step on a cone? <laughs> what were some of the bigger areas that you wanted to uh, him to improve in? I would just say, um, and he, like he, he's got his personality. I think the fans are going to love him. Um, I think he's got some of that fire that that Cam brought to the to the uh, to the locker room to to the group. Um, I think he's going to bring that 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 nasty villain. Um, I think opposing fan bases will find him to be. An acceptable villain, um, because when he, when he when he hits his shots and 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 his team is is going to win the game, he's going to let people know. He's going to play with that type of confidence and flair. So, um, but it's just the stuff you know. We just with all these guys, the young players, you know, every possession is critically important, and uh, we're going to have to teach him to play every possession like it's the uh, uh, you know like uh, like it's the most important thing ever. What have the other newcomers shown you? Anybody stood out? Um, I mean, they all have. I think Ahmad, uh, just getting through the early, like the first couple practices were, were tough. Uh, you know, they're tough on guards, but they're really, they, you know, he had, a, he, it was, he had a tough first couple of them. His resilience and response and, and mental toughness uh, and his ability to, to learn and, and adapt his game was impressive. Um, you know, and then Isaiah, I think we, we we felt like we had a guy coming in on a great trajectory, and uh, he's shown up, uh, shown to be better. Uh, sometimes the players are what you thought they are, uh, a little bit worse or or better than you thought you were getting. He's better. What he's makes better. him better than what you thought? Better offensive player, better uh, mm-hmm. better production offensively. He's got to work on the shooting and, and handling the ball like a guard, but... Um, like he, he brings a lot of really good attributes. Have you exciting. had a chance to catch Steph and uh, Cam play so far? Yeah, I mean Steph's first game that was like, uh, you know, it, it wasn't like the like probably the best played game you'll see. Uh, so that was, but uh, it seemed like there was more players playing in, in Cam's game last night that, you know, potentially could be playing on NBA teams. That was uh, an intense, fun game to watch and. I thought Cam could have, you know, tried to do a little bit more off the, off the dribble, um, you know. And then obviously, I was looking for some of the defensive mistakes. I'll, I'll call them today when I get in the car, and we'll talk about those. Uh, but you could see that that he looked like one of the better players on the court in the game. Still can shoot. <laughs> How important was it to get four guys drafted just for the program momentum and all that? Yeah, it's helped a lot. I think. It, <clears throat> Obviously, it, it helps from a recruiting standpoint, but also a, an underrated way it helps is the buy-in in the building with the players too. You know, everyone in my locker room aspires to be where those guys are. So, just um, it, it's good for the internal buy-in, um, uh, just to have more of that. You can never have enough of that. So that's key. You feel a bigger target on your back for the three feet like other times for you. <laughs> Too early? No, I uh, no. You yes, bigger, bigger target, bigger target. But uh, who wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> I'll take that uh, all day. I, you feel it. Um, you know, you feel it. You know, when you're out on the road recruiting, you know that. Uh, you know, in the lead up to the season, um, everyone's going to be gunning for us. Um, but you get accustomed to that here at UConn. When we were bad, they were gunning for us. Uh, we we had a target when we were bad, so. Um, but a three-peat, are they different than... No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. A little bit more juice to it. But, um, you know, the, the, the we have the same... When we were bad, we had a target. Uh, now we're really good, uh, and we have the targets. But if you're going to beat us, you better you better be really good because we don't lose the teams that aren't really good.